Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video I want to discuss what the best Julio Rodriguez rookie card is. In the past few months, I've had quite a few people ask me what is the best Julio Rodriguez rookie card? Is it the Topps Chrome short print? Is it the Logo Fractor? Is it the top Sapphire? And all these different questions. And the truth of the matter is, I don't think we've ever had a rookie with as confusing of rookie cards as Julio Rodriguez or Wander Franco this year. I would even argue that Wander Franco is more straightforward because he was in top series one, while with Julio, it's kind of a little bit more confusing because of the short print issue we've seen in multiple flagship sets. In the past, I've done videos like these where I call them rookie card rankings. There's a pyramid and bottom to top shows the least important cards to the most important cards at the top. And I was gonna do the same thing with Julio Rodriguez and do top 15, but his flagship cards basically make up half of them. And so I decided what I'll do is I'm gonna show the B tier cards that I view as good rookie cards to purchase, but not the best. And then I will rank the top seven flagship cards. On top of that, I did calculate the print run of every single flagship card. I've learned a way to do this. I've showed it in the past. And if you want to use it, it's actually Google Drive. I'll share it where you can copy and paste it into your own Google Drive. You can't edit my link, but I want to make sure you're able to calculate your own stuff as well. This is generally only possible for hobby only products or for products that have a parallel exclusive to that product. But either way, let's dive into this. So these are the B tier Julio Rodriguez rookie cards. You can see right off the bat, these are essentially premium or legacy sets. When I say legacy, I mean right here, this Topps Heritage, Stadium Club, and there's even other ones on here like Topps Finest. Those are all legacy sets. You could even put Put Topps Finest in the premium category. And the premium category is just like Bowman Chrome, Topps Finest, Bowman Sterling. Here is the Update Silver Pack, Julio Rodriguez Rookie Card, Topps Chrome Black, Topps Chrome Cosmic, and so forth. There's other sets that haven't come out yet, like Ben Baller, Bowman's Best. Those type of things will eventually be released. And when they are, they'll be added to this list. On top of that, more short printed and usually hobby exclusive cards are in the B tier, like the Sterling, like the Topps Finest, and so forth. You will see some retail products like Heritage and and stadium club, but usually those cards are only here because of the legacy aspect. Some sets aren't out yet, like Bowman's Best, so I don't have any images, but this B tier is just kind of the cards I found, and I could be missing a few that are already released, but some will be added in here once release happens for those sets as well. So I like all these cards. I think these each have the ability to be long-term valuable cards in of themselves, but I don't know if they have the ability to be iconic like the next following cards. So let's jump into those cards. The very first one is Tops Update, and this might surprise you because Topps Update, this card is worth less than probably all of these, maybe besides the Heritage. And you might say, well, that card's worth less because there's 300,000 of them. <laughs> and that's the most ever for a Topps Update release probably since the 1980s and 1990s. But for a Topps Update, even though it is really high, there is going to be a very high market cap. That market cap just means that even though this card might only sell for $3 each, there's so many of them that people want this card and they sell really commonly that the overall value value of those cards combined is worth more than the overall value of the value of any of these other cards and so forth. So that is why this card's on this list. It's also the flagship image in a flagship set, which is important to collectors and to the continuity of baseball card collecting in general. It does have a really high number of parallels, 19. That does include two image variations. So 17 traditional different colored borders like the platinum one of one all the way to the gold out of 2022. And those parallels will command a major premium. The reason I say that is because even though there are more parallels and even though there's more of these base cards than some of these other sets I showed in the tier B section, these cards will go for more because these parallels are condition sensitive. They're from an iconic image from an iconic set and people like to chase those types of products. So for that reason, I think Topps update at number six makes a lot of sense. And to even double down on that opinion, here's Topps Chrome update. It's the Chromium version of that previous set. There's about 100,000, 120,000 of these cards in existence. And even though that number's high, there is a chance that the PSA 10s of this card become valuable. And that's because the centering and the borders of these cards are really bad. And there's a lot of surface marks, a lot of surface stains, a lot of print lines, a lot of issues with the surface. <laughs> and for that purpose, the PSA 10s might be worth more money. We can look at the Ken Griffey Jr. 1989 Upper Deck Rookie Card. I'm not comparing this to that in terms of like importance to the hobby, but just in regards to pop counts. You know, he has like 90,000. I think it's the most graded card of all time, close to 100,000 total graded, but only like 4,000 
in PSA 10. So at a four to 10% gem rate, meaning only four to 10% get a PSA 10. This won't be that bad because it is still a Chromium stock, but they won't be as gradable, say as a Juan Soto Topps Chrome update from 2018. These cards aren't in as good of condition in regards to quality control. There's 11 parallels. Usually Topps Chrome update has less parallels than a lot of other sets. They're increasing that because it is a popular set. And if they didn't increase the parallel range, it would be a very boring product to open because there wouldn't be many cool cards to pull. It has a high market cap as well as the previous Topps update card, meaning that this is a very high value card as a collective sum. And this is the refractor version number to 299. And I personally love the Topps Chrome update refractors. They're some of my favorite cards ever made. And those parallels will also command a major premium, especially the serial numbered parallels. For the pink and the purple that aren't serial numbered, it's not quite the same, but overall the ones that are serial numbered will have major value. Julio also has autographs in this set, which makes it even more of a chase to open in comparison to other products. The next one at number four is the top series two short print. This is an image variation. He has no base card in series two. This is the card and it's pretty dang hard to pull. It's about the same print run as the Ronda Cunha Jr. bat down. I did an entire 20 minute video. I'll be breaking down the print runs of this card. If you want to watch that as well, it will also be in the description of this video, but about five to 10,000 of these. And that sounds like a lot in comparison to a lot of other cards, but realistically five to 10,000 is reasonable. It's reasonable in the sense that this is a card that people can pick up and pull out of packs, but it's not going to be in every single blaster box or not even every single blaster case. If we're looking at 40 blaster boxes per blaster case, there's a chance this card doesn't get pulled often at all. And the thing I love about it and other collectors love about it is there's zero parallels. This is just the card and that makes this even easier to collect. When this came out, we all thought this was going to be the card, but we've seen with Topps that they did not recycle this image onto a Topps Chrome Sapphire or a Topps Chrome short print card itself, which did ultimately hurt this card because people were kind of banking on that. I thought that would be the case. Like we saw with Ronald Cunha Jr. in 2018 Topps Chrome Sapphire. And we saw with his short print in Topps Series 2, just like Julio Rodriguez. Didn't quite happen. At number three, we have the Julio Rodriguez Topps Chrome Update Sapphire. You might be surprised that this one's not a little bit higher, but I'll explain why. So the print run on these is about 2,700, about 3,000. We can calculate that with the pack odds. It will surprise you what the regular Sapphire is, which is why this is probably number three. There are seven parallels of this card. And the reason why that's important is because like we already mentioned in this video, the lower number of parallels a card has, the more value that the base cards have, which in turn is good for everybody that owns that base card. It does have photo continuity with the Topps Chrome update and the Topps update, which I love. I love that those photos match. You know, I, I literally talk about it all the time in the channel, so I'm sorry. I do know for some people they prefer the other way, and I understand that point of view as a collector as well. But the thing that will be big about these cards, obviously, is the parallels. They have seven of them, and that's great because those will go for big money. The one problem is compared to this to the regular Sapphire is they go for significantly less. So you know the Topps Chrome update Sapphire, even though it has that continuity on the photos, isn't quite as important as the monetary value of the card. On my Instagram story, I asked my followers which card they preferred, the Topps Chrome update Sapphire or the regular Topps Chrome Sapphire, which I'll show you in just a second. And they picked this one. And even though they picked this one, it's just hard to say because of that value difference. This is the other image, but you can see it goes for about three times more. And the reason for that is because the print run is about half. And the reason why that's so important is because this is a really low print run. And that's because this checklist was 660 cards for regular Topps Chrome Sapphire, while Topps Chrome Update Sapphire had a checklist of only 330 cards. And so it makes sense it's about half of what it was for this set versus Topps Chrome Update Sapphire because they probably produced roughly the same amount of boxes to get the same amount of demand. But that just makes this Julio all the more rare. This is the parallel version. That's what Topps has in their sell sheet, which is why it's included here. So I apologize, but it was just a really clear image and there's six parallels in this set the only problem again is it doesn't match any other image but that's okay because it sells for more than the card that does match the image so it's just whatever you prefer i could see this flip-flopping in the future but just the fact these are more rare i think might hold more value for the long run and it'll be interesting to see how those two shake out it is unfortunate there's two sapphire cards i wish it was just one but that's just how it is right now in 2020 with the way tops is making rookie cards and that brings us to number one b this card is unique and it's special and i I didn't realize how important it was until I did a lot of research for this video. I knew it was rare, but I didn't realize how rare it was. For Topps Chrome Logo Fractor, let's discuss what it is real quick. This is a different variant of regular Topps Chrome. 
And so you have Mookie Betts in Topps Chrome. You have a Mookie Betts Logo Fractor in this set. You have a Mike Trout in Topps Chrome. You have a Mike Trout Logo Fractor in this set. They're the same image and they're the same back. It's the exact same card with just these little MLB logos across the card. Really unique, really cool, and a pretty valuable set at that. And those cards for those base Mike Trout Mookie Betts, there's about 3,500 of those. But this Julio Rodriguez, it's a short print in that set, which doesn't sound like a big deal. But when you look at the pack odds, you can only get a short print rookie in every 38 packs. And there are 10 rookies you can get short prints of. So one in every 380 packs is this card. And you only get two of these packs per box. And so for that purpose, if you do the math, about 200 to 300 of these cards exist. And so it might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less, but 200 to 300 is a really good range of where they're really going to be at. Again, use that calculator if you want to do the own math. And I will say this is a very important card from a very important set and product because Topps Chrome is always going to have value. Only one parallel as well, the one of one. I love that about this card because that just means that this is the card. You don't have to worry about pulling the gold or the red. It's just this card. Whoever gets that one of one, congratulations, you hit the lottery. This is the inaugural issue of a flagship, albeit a variant product, but it is going to be inaugural like Topps Chrome Sapphire potentially was in 2016, which has really great value. And the design is really unique and cool. That brings us to 1A. And I think you could switch these two out. And I think long term, one of these two cards will be there. I just don't know which one it is myself, but this is the Topps Chrome short print. I have no way of calculating the print run of this because it didn't include the cards in the set. So I can't confirm that it matches the other short prints of other players. And so for that reason, my best guess is about a thousand. It might be more, it might be less, but just looking at the print runs of these other cards, a thousand makes sense to me. There's only two parallels and that's a great thing. So it's number to 25 and number to five. I don't know if there's a one of one. I could be mistaken, but I thought that's what the checklist said from Cardboard Connection. So I'm going to stick with that. One of the other main things is Top Chrome short prints always have a great legacy. They've been around for a very long time. Bryce Harper has Topps Chrome short print rookie cards that command a huge premium. You see the same thing with Acuna, Soto. You see it with almost every single player who's in regular Topps Chrome. They almost always have a short print that commands a premium. The difference between Julio Rodriguez and those other players, he doesn't have a base card compared to those other players. So this is the only Topps Chrome card you can really pull from the regular Topps Chrome set. Unfortunately, this was not included in those sets. You can only get it from the light boxes if you want to purchase a hobby product. And you can never get these again out of packs, which I think only helps the mystique of these cards and the value of these cards. There's other great rookie cards to choose from, like we saw with Sapphire, like we saw with the Logo Fractor, but I think this one has a lot of great things going for it. It's good looking. It's a legacy set being Topps Chrome, which is amazing. It's a good image, hardly any parallels. It's short printed, it's controversial, and it's a very simplistic design. The Logo Fractor was extremely over the top. This one's kind of the opposite. This is very simple and very appealing to look at and hold and see it refract in the light itself. So for that purpose, I think this this card is going to be the number one, but I think the number one B, which is the Logo Fractor, has a great chance of taking that position due to the rareness of the card. Other than that, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this video. If you actually agree, disagree, where you would move these rankings. On top of that, let me know if you like the situation Tops has done with so many different images, or if you'd prefer to have a more traditional approach where there's actually only a few images in the flagship sets like a Ronald Acuna Jr. or like a Juan Soto. Thank you for watching the video. If you aren't a subscriber and you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future and I will see you in the next one.